First of the party, what's the deal? What's the deal? Let's get it. Got some summer league piss and action coming to y'all, man. We're gonna hit it off, man. Start we're gonna start it off live, bro. Hot and fire. It, what you like, man? What you like, man? Uh I'm I ain't, I ain't too happy about us being on too, but I'm not mm-hmm. panicking. I ain't upset about it. I mean, uh it's the summer league, bro. We really just trying to look at the young guys. It's more about the development than it is the results right now. So uh, everybody that's uh, a Pistons fan, but they worry, they feel like we should have picked Jalen Green or we should have went somewhere else and all. Hey, man, be patient. Calm down, relax. You know, it ain't that big of a deal right now. We got the young boys. You need to be paying attention to how we develop and why we looking like. Troy Reaver and uh, Dwayne Casey said that they wanted to have positionless basketball. And if you look at the team, just the summer league team, that's exactly what we got right now. So uh, I'm content with the summer league team. I'm content about what the Pistons is doing, the moves that they're making. So let's get into it. Um, yeah, so far so good, man. Um, the 0-2, I'm not really worried about it. Um, if everybody worried about um, – uh, some league championships, they could still win that if y'all are worried about that. But um, I'm I'm more worried about seeing the guys' progression. Uh, I was one of them. I wanted to see Sadiq Bay see if he can create his own jumper, see if he can start, you know, working on his ball handle so he can get his own. I'm happy to see that he's been doing that. You know what I'm saying? You've been seeing him go out there and get his own basket. He had a lot of good flashes, a lot of good shots, you know what I'm saying, he had made. But in the same sense, we didn't also seen a uh, dog need to be doing some playmaking with John Beeline. Boy, you got to pass the ball too, young boy. You got to uh, pass man. the ball, young man. You know what I'm saying? He don't pass enough, bro. So um, that's, you know, something that I ain't really been liking. Killian, all NBA defender, bro. <laughs> like, like I can see it, bro. He got like, the potential for sure. Cause... He done put on size. Uh, um just tenacious. You can see his confidence on defense, too. I mean, he was shutting Jalen down. Jalen down, scored bro. three points when guarded by Cade and uh, Killian. So he was all alone. And the, other, and the three points is on Cade. So both of them show really good defense. I love what i seen from them boys defensively. Uh, um, what you think about Luka Garza, <laughs> bro? See, bro, that's exactly where I was getting to. I want to talk about Killian, too. A lot of people was hating on Killian last year, saying it was a horrible pick. I think the Pistons should have went a different route. But I also said that I've seen a lot of J. Kidd and Killian Hayes game. What did it look like last night? Great defender, okay? Facilitated the offense the first two games. My only problem with Killian, and I, and everybody know that, it's not just a jump shot. It's just being more aggressive and looking for your own shot on the offensive end, period. Whether it be a, a three-point jumper or whether it be you getting to the hole and actually looking to put the, the ball in the hole. Um, but I'm excited about Killian. I ain't gonna lie. I'm excited probably more about Killian than I am anybody else on the team. Because he could be put Isaiah Thomas, Chauncey Billis. We've always had a point guard that can play defense and can get their own. So we need Killian to produce more, but I'm excited. He long. Uh my man can put my man can hoop, bro. And if you know basketball, you can see that he can hoop. Now, can he hoop at a at a star level? I don't know yet, but I'm hoping that he can get there. If you if you know anything about Dwayne Casey. He know how to uh, develop point guards. Fred Van Fleet, champion. Um, uh, Kyle Lowry, champion. So he going to follow in those same footsteps I'm, I'm hoping with Killian. Uh, to answer your question about Garza, a steal in a draft. My only negative, I'm going to get it out the way quick so I can go ahead and just really brag on Garza. He can't move his feet on defense, bro, slow. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, and, and yesterday, Al Perrin, not only did he move, not only did he cook him, you know what I'm saying, left to right, he body guards are like, nigga, huh? take some of his shoulder. Hashtag, a like hey, hashtag bro slow. <laughs> yeah, bro slow. You know what I'm saying? Bro slow, bro. Put that in the chat. Put it in the comments. Hashtag bro slow. But hashtag Garza, bro on slow. the offensive end, bro, whether he picking and rolling or he really dangerous with the pick and pop. Young Dirk move we hit him with yesterday, though. Man, he? you see it? Oh, you took away hey. all my moves. Last resort, hey. let me lean back and hit you with a little something. Man, that was hey. ridiculous, bro. Yes, sir. You know? Man, so yeah, I was happy with what I seen uh, from him, man. Young Lambeer, okay. he was very Lambeer-like. Man, what? Mimic or core-like for me, man. That's yes, sir. I, you, I, hey, when my, you hit me with that text, bro, I was like, wow. He mimic. Mimic or core? And mimic O'Cor. was a, a champion with us, too, man. He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love what I've been seeing from Garza, man. Post-game, uh, offensive rebounding. 
defensively he lost. You know what I'm saying? The game got it's going to slow. It's going to slow down to him. You know what I'm saying? It's it's an adjustment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think um, realistically, the G League for him this year sell some tickets and develop as well. You know what I'm saying? It's not a bad you know situation going to the G League. It's going to be here in the city. So he can still be there, practice, get game time as starter minutes, developing his game, and always come up and practice with the Pistons. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's key. I think it's crucial. Yeah, shout out to the it. Motor City Crews, boys. That's the uh, yes, sir. Ben Wallace and the Motor City Crews, man. Motor City Crews, man. Uh, but uh, one more thing on Garza, too. I'm not really so hell-bent on him going to uh, the G League. Uh, if he can prove in training camp, okay. Right? If he can prove that I can move, I can stick with uh, laterally, if I can contest, a smart contest, and still move my feet to get back. Last like Yesterday, Alperin hit him with a pump fake, and you could tell that it was over with. Hey, bro, Dog's a hole. pro, man. Dog was he, the MVP in the Turkish Turkey. League last year, bro. Yeah, yeah, he a pro. MVP. But if Garza can find a way to get better on defense, if he can just find a way to guard, bro, he got a spot on the team. When you got a guy that's that big, that's going offensive rebound, you see the work that he put in. He lost 26 pounds. He played a 13-minute stretch yesterday. I watched it. I had it timed on my phone. 13 minutes from the time he got in to the time he was subbed, I was a 13-minute stretch where he went all out. He went crazy. And, he was and you talking shit after every and basket he, he talking, made, too. You see what I'm saying? And with that type of offensive prowess that he got, and Detroit not with as many offensive weapons as I would like to see them have compared to other teams, I think that him being on the roster would be good. Even if he started out in G League, got his shit together, and then moved up midseason or did a two-way deal, I can even deal with that as well. I'm also excited about the Michigan man, Isaiah Livers. Um, he was a big, big, big part of the Michigan success this past year. He ain't been playing. He's not going to play this summer league because of the foot injury that he had. It kept him out of the, uh, the tournament. My man is a defender, and he is a pro-level shooter. He can shoot the ball from everywhere. So with that being said, and he got size. He about 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, so with that being said, we got another long ranging guy that can shoot, potentially can get some time into the rotation. 3 and D. Uh, yeah, 3 and D, which I love that, man. I love There's nothing wrong with being a 3 and D player. Everybody can't be a superstar, man. But I'm excited about the Pistons, bro. But you know what? Uh, Isaiah Livers, bro, it's crazy, bro. When I look <laughs> at him and I watch his game, bro, I see a lot of Chris Middleton. Like, when I see it, you know, so far as just the pulling up and the shooting, you know, saying so the mm -hmm. shooting off of uh, the quick high release, quick release, I see that. And he got some pull-up to him, too. That's him a perfect and, player, comp. Perfect, bro. I like I like that. I think that he, he remind me of that. Um, he got the foot injury right now, but I see a future for him. See a future here with him. And uh, like I said, B-Line is good at development. John B-Line is he here is. in Detroit, so he going to work with them boys. Um, and and Dwayne Casey, too. Um and uh, it's it's funny too how the draft works. Troy Weaver's son is already he been knowing Luca Garza for years. They already knew what type of person he was. They knew who they were gonna get. So I wasn't surprised that they picked Luca Garza because uh, it fit. John Beeline, he got history with Isaiah Livers. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like I said, I'm excited about the Pistons young core and I, uh, my man. I can't never remember his name, but the draft pick for the state got in. Both Both sides. He got in last night, man. He looked good. You know, he got a couple offensive rebounds and everything like that. He probably for sure going to the G League once again. Ain't nothing wrong with the G League, you know, nothing at all. Yeah, Florida State. Uh, Florida State guy. That's from yeah, your school, definitely. man, Florida State. So, uh, yeah, man. He played defense. Football, so, man. dog, get them right over there to play defense and, and rebound. Yeah, Leonard Hamilton, run. man. Yeah. And I seen Leonard some um, uh, some tape on him, man, and where you know, he can shoot the three, too. Something he wasn't able to show at Florida State. Uh, athletic and can move up and down the floor. Like, I seen some footage on him handling the ball on a fast mm -hmm. break. You know what I'm saying? Dog got some uh, – he agile. You're not your, you're not your typical 7-1 player. So, Most definitely. Um, it's I something that me and you potential. talked about. We talked about this uh, uh, on the phone yesterday and, and, and getting prepared for this uh, – in preparation for this video – one thing that I want to make sure that we talk about on today's segment and the Pistons edition is uh, Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant playing for Team USA is extremely big for Detroit Pistons. And I'm going to tell you why. Everybody that has been interviewed from Team USA from the original dream team all the way until now, the one consistent thing that each person said is that when you get into the room with all alphas, you thought that you worked hard. You thought that you knew what it took to be a champion. You thought you knew what it took to be successful. 
until you get into the Team USA when everybody is a superstar. When you with Kobe, when you with Kevin Durant, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Larry Bird, when you around other great players, you realize, you know what, I'm not as great as I thought I was. I'm not working as hard as I thought I was. It's a lot more to my game that I can add. When you see that as a player, you can't unsee that. The reason why that's big for Detroit, Jeremy Grant is going to come back with a work ethic that he learned from Kevin Durant, from Damian Lillard, from other superstars. Now he's the best player on the Pistons team. He's going to elevate everybody. Cade is already a hard worker. So you got your best player and then you got the face of your franchise. If you got those two guys working at a very high competitive rate, the rest of the guys have no other choice but to meet them there. I, I really think that that's super important, my man, for Jeremy it's Grant not just, to go to team. And like, we, like we discussed yesterday, it's not just Jeremy. You got Isaiah Stewart and uh, Sadiq Bey, uh, two players that we drafted last year that got that type of pedigree. A uh, hardworking young man. You can see it in their in they physical stature. You know what I'm saying? So uh, both of them guys, they went out there and they practiced with Team USA as well, too. It's a lot to go into that, bro. You are learning how to prepare like a champion. You're going up against the top competition in the world. So you have no choice but to get better. You're getting some of the best coaching in the world for that two, two to three weeks you're down there from Greg Popovich to uh, – uh, Eric Spolstra, all of those, the dream team of coaches down there. You're getting a lot of information, a lot of different uh, uh, styles of coaching that you're just absorbing. So I think it's very key and crucial that those guys come back here and they show that uh, show that preparation and their hard work when they get back here. And Dwayne Casey go appreciate it. Those guys earned it too, man. Jeremy Grant had a hell of a year. And the two young boys, they both was first team all rookie. And they showed enough to, hey, Spolster and Popovich wanted them boys on the roster. KD and them wanted them boys on the roster to go against them because they knew they was going to get them right. They wouldn't go back down. So it's huge, huge for the yeah. organization and the franchise. I just see a lot of positive light going on with the Pistons right now. Um, first of the party prediction, let's get right to it. I got us being top 10. We will be in a play-in play game, potentially a playoff team this year, the Detroit Pistons. Um, they have the ability to. Um, you got to look at the division that we in. I, I believe personally, even with the addition of Evan Mobley, I do think we're a little bit better than Cleveland right now. Um, I do believe that we are better than the Pacers. Of course, we have to do – actually, we have a lot of catching up to do to Milwaukee. Everybody understand that. Defended champions. Mm -hmm. As far as the other teams, we young and ready to go just like them. We can compete with Indiana. Um Chicago, I feel like we can compete with them as well. It did get a little rough because they got DeMar DeRozan now, um, but they still got to get chemistry because to me, DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine is very similar with Zach Levine, honestly, being a better basketball player to me because his offensive game, he got more range than DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan is free throw line in the end. He a mid-range guy, but no three-pointer. So I think the Pistons are going to compete, man. They're going to surprise some teams this year. Um, and remember, where everybody always want to talk about what other teams going to do to the Pistons. Remember, they got to come see us, too. They got to contend with what we got over here, too. So yes, sir. let's do it. Hey, man, uh, I'm going to predict uh, 35 wins. 35 wins. Um, I like your prediction with the 10 spot. I like that. Um, I think that's uh, – um, that's a good one right there. I think that's 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 legit. Um, you gotta remember last year, bro. We beat a lot of elite teams. We beat all the elite teams uh when we played them. And uh we were trying to lose games to fade for K. You gotta remember they were sitting a lot of players down at a, at, at certain times last year. So this isn't your typical ordinary uh last, you know, last place team, you know, so this was strategic, you know, so you don't get two all rookie players and a player uh, going to the Olympic team and Jeremy Grant that was second and most improved voting and say, oh, they ain't, they the worst team in the league. You would think that would be somebody like Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? But the Pistons uh, had a really good season. The young players played well. Um, I think Nature will be good too. I can see K uh, playing well, uh, rookie of the year. Uh, I've been loving what I've, like from Sequel, but loving what I've been seeing from him too. I think they're gonna play. I think they're gonna be well, man. I think they're gonna be good, bro. I think they'll get it's and it's, it's, it's key that they capitalize off all this momentum that they're getting, you yeah. know what I'm saying? With K bringing the attention to them with uh from the primetime games, the ESPN is the rookie, you know what I'm saying? So they got to go out there and capitalize, and I think they will. And I think it's early yeah. in the uh summer league. The good thing about it is we got three more games, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So 
that's another sample size and enough tape for us to get to watch on Cade and Killing and OC. I got a lot of tape. I don't watch this for the two di- two games. I got a lot of tape. So I'm say another thing too that I've been noticing too. You could tell that the Pistons is a young team. They do young team stuff. For example, uh, they getting killed on backdoor cuts. That's young because you're so into the moment and you know stuff be ha- somebody hit you back to oh shit. Okay, the ball go up and you excited <laughs> to be out there, bro. You forgetting your fundamentals. You forgot yeah. to hit somebody. Damn, I didn't, I didn't miss my block off. The Pistons starting off real fast and then they can't hold the lead. That's just you being young because you stop playing defense and you stop boxing out. And then now, the, and then Sadiq Bey, he, the ball sticking with him too. He holding on to that motherfucker too long. He's sticking. You know <laughs> yes, what I'm sir. saying? Killing and not being aggressive enough. Said so, say cool, he not being aggressive enough. And I also want to say this too. Killian Hayes will be a good three-point shooter. Everybody want to know how I know why I'm so confident. Look at his free throw form and his follow-through and his percentage when he stepped to the line. He got a great form, great follow-through. He 80% from the line. You More than likely, most people that's 80% from the line can really shoot three ball. It's going to mm-hmm. transition. The only reason why Killian numbers from three have been so bad this past uh, this summer league is because he's taking horrible shots. Every shot he's been taking, the clock been down. He didn't, he ain't getting rushing those, it. you know what I'm saying? He rushing, rushing it. it. And then say cool just he he a great athletic and he defender. He a great defender. He just doesn't have any offensive rhythm yet. And once he get it, or if he gets it, man, he could be phenomenal. You know, Siku is so he's been he, to me been my favorite piss in this this summer league. Defensive his defensive aggression, very good defensively on the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? He defending the one through the five. He, he in his awareness. Oh, defensively is really good. Um, very active, very active. The thing on Siku is he going to cut all fucking day. He going to cut and yeah. move without the ball. But this is the downfall when he's not getting the ball when he's cutting, just like anybody. When we go out yeah. there and hoop and we out there cutting this shit and they ain't getting the ball, I'm going to go sit my ass in this corner, bro. Yep. Todd, you know, that's what we do. Siku. Mm-hmm. At times, get that, but you ought to see on them fast breaks, he don't stop moving. He running. He running. I love with him, uh, the connection he got with uh, with, uh, Killian, uh, and the piggyback on the Killian shooting. I think it's his feet. I think it's uh, footwork. Uh, And and the shots that he's open, you know what I'm saying? You can see when he's set the free throws, he's at a good base. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. When he's shooting or whatever, he's taking a lot of off-balance, one-legged shots. Exactly. You see that. John exactly. Beeline is going to work that out, the shooting. Yeah. He's going to line exactly. him up and start getting that solid base up under him. And you and see that when he shoots his free throws. So he got he going to be good. Don't be surprised on the catch and shoot when his percentage go up. Now, mm-hmm. I understand because uh, his three-pointer has been off the dribble. That's not – he ain't even there yet. You know what I'm saying? He need to get more confident just at a catch and shoot. But watch how – when it's the reverse. See, we already seen what it looked like when Killian drive and he kicked the K, but that's going to be an opposite effect because when K mm-hmm. come and drive and he kicked the Killian, don't be surprised when he in Little Caesars Arena hitting the motherfucker. You and know thing I don't understand is just gonna hit. shooting. All of them shooting been off. We missed a lot of threes yesterday and the game before. K has missed a lot of threes as well. So this could be just two bad shooting nights. Hopefully it's nothing consistent. But hopefully, I expect the, thing, the next game for them boys to be hot because you got to remember Sadiq Bay was one for six yesterday, and he is a mm-hmm. very good three-point shooter. So I think they just had an off game, but they still show flashes and show shit. So I was pretty Another happy thing, with that. Sadiq, uh, not, yeah, Sadiq pressed all game. And what I mean, and I mean that in a negative way, not like in somebody's shit on defense. I mean, like he pressed and was trying to make shit happen. And it just, it wasn't, it wasn't happening. And I, and, and my thing is you have to be, you already got a year in the league. So technically you're a veteran, right? But you know what? I'm starting you to need think, to bro, do you ball. think it's, do you think it's some, uh, do you think yes. it's a point of emphasis with him? Do you think it's uh, like, these they are key points to where Dwayne Casey said, in this summer league, I want to see you go out there and get your own basket. This is what we want you, know you to what? work on. Because I see I him out there working the mid-range and going out there and creating his own basket. You know what I'm saying? I, and I want to know, I'm wondering, is he just, uh, you? is that just a point of emphasis for him? You know what I'm saying? And I never even thought about it. So, you know what, bro, it could be. And I actually hope that that's the case. Because he's mm-hmm. not playing team basketball right now. And that's a problem. 
Yeah. You know, it really is. I'm not trying to die. I love Sadiq Bay. You know, I love him. I have no issue with him. I'm just calling the game how I see it. This is how you playing. You pressing the issue and it's not working. And then you ain't necessarily kicking the ball when it needed to be kicked. And then when you do finally get that open opportunity, you're not cashing in on it. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's the issue that I'm that I, that I'm having. Also on top of that, too, you a leader on the summer league team. Your body language hasn't been the way I wanted it to be. I'm big on looking at people's body language and understanding what's going on. His body language ain't been the way I would like for it to be. His body language should be similar to Cade. Cade clapping, bringing in the team. Oh, we together. He a captain. He a leader on the floor. He talking. Natural leader. Sadiq, Sadiq should be having a little bit of that in him too as well. Um, so, so just off your experience. To be fair to Sadiq, he didn't show none of that last year. He didn't show uh, uh, a selfish uh, player, a non-team player. Right. He didn't show that. And to be right. fair, uh, he's been labeled just a three-point shooter. So, And I think that that's a point of emphasis that we've probably been going after. I know, man, you yeah. spoke yesterday on the phone about it or whatever, but I think that's what it could be. And I'm not trying to down Sadiq. I don't want nobody in the comments, oh, you – I love Sadiq Bay. I just got to be honest about the situation because that's what we're here for. We're here to be able to get you all the real because it's a negative with Cade right now. You could tell that Jalen Green's offensive package is more mature than Cade's. You can look at the efficiency of the scoring last night. Cade had 20. I believe Jalen had 26. I think Cade shot like eight for like 18 or something like that. And I think Cuz shot nine for 11, but he went to the free throw line seven times and he hit all seven. No, 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 Cade no. He shot nine from 11 from – Nine from eleven from the free throw line. I think he was just like six of, I think he was like six of eleven from the field. I mean, that's still that's not a bad percentage. That's still over forty percent, I believe. Yeah, Cade, percentage what? wise, percentage wise and number wise, um, if you didn't watch the game, it looked like Jalen got off. But if you watched that right. game, it was very quiet. You know. Yeah, you know. When you, you know. watched that game, it was like okay, he's uh-huh. not. He wasn't making an impact. It was more Alfie uh, Sagoon and and Josh Christopher, where mm-hmm. he was just free throws, free throws, free throws. Here go a three, here go a three. Where K showed more of a complete package, in my opinion. Uh, he probably would have had uh, ten assists if the threes was falling yesterday. Uh, he showed you the showed you the post game. He showed you the three game. He crossed him up and hit the three. Crossed up, get to the lane. He showed you the whole complete package. You know what I'm saying? Showed you the leadership. Where Jalen was very quiet. Jalen Green was very quiet yesterday. Very quiet. team got to trust him, too. K numbers would have been a lot better if one or two things happened. One, they ran ran this play twice where it's just a simple cross screen. They come in across for K. He popping out on the other side. I got my man Pence sealed off in the post. I didn't get the ball. We're going to mm-hmm. run it again in the second half. I didn't get the ball. K got K got a three-level game. You got to get that man a ball right there and allow him to work because it's not. it don't mean he's going to score. He might be able to facilitate. But that, Remember when they gave it two. to him later in the game? He scored off of it. Faced exactly. him up, got to the basket, too big, finished. That's what I'm saying. The first two times, get him the ball there. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Get, the, get your players the ball where they're going to be good at. The second thing you got to do, K got to get to the line. You got to find ways in the NBA to draw foul. One, it allows your team to get catch a couple of breaths because you at the free throw line doing your routine. Two, it slow the game down. It take a wear and tear off your body if I'm able to get to this line. All the great scorers get into the line. And like I said, that's one thing that I did like about Jalen game yesterday. K got to do a little bit more of attacking. And I think that's going to come with time, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I really do think it's going to come with time. It's not a knock on him. It's something that I want to see. You score 20 with no free throws. Imagine if he had free throws. You'd have probably 30 last night. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he didn't get to the line uh, the first game either. I don't think. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, that's that's something I would like to see, too, him more getting to the basket. You can see he loved that jumper. He shot a lot of threes yesterday. It's a lot of uh, – it's a three-point sure. league now, and he shot over 40% in college. Uh, but um, I would like to see him try to get some more in between, sprinkle in the threes, but try to get some mid-range game in there and get to the basket. That's what I'd like to see from him. Most definitely. Uh, we got this fantasy football coming up too, man. League is almost full. I'm actually about to jump back on uh, online and try to get some more uh, players. We got a couple more spots to fill. So uh, probably get that done by this weekend, man. You ready? Yeah, man, I'm definitely ready. And speaking of online too, a lot of people will be, you know, looking at our YouTube and we appreciate it, man. Keep sharing, commenting, all that. But we are every day we posting on Twitter, 
at First of the Party Pod and on Facebook, First of the Party with the explanation yes. point, man. We going up. And our members is talking and we talking back. You, we don't, we are not the only ones that's creating posts. Our followers, everybody correct the post. It's a platform. It's, there. A it's a platform, platform, man. It's an open discussion. If you feel a type of way about any sports related, man, come in there, come join the community. Drop it in there, man. We we always talking. We me and uh, Al Fudge, we in there every day, bro. We I'm hammering Twitter, he hammering Facebook. We on top of it, you know. We everywhere with it. So, you know. Okay, man. But that's our it. outlook so far for the Pistons, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Hey, we gonna come up with some more content coming soon. Uh, Lions training camp, man. We got that Lions pro a hey, preseason football, baby. That's hey, it's around the corner, man. Friday, mm, right? Friday, this Friday. Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow, some games come on tomorrow, but you know, I'm ready for Dan Quinn. That's my coach. I love my coach, man. I love my coach, man. Dan Campbell, man. Dan Quinn was at Atlanta. Dan Campbell, yeah. Dan Quinn Campbell. was a Campbell. Who? Yeah. No yeah, I love my coach, it. though, bro. I love him. Don't worry about it, man. Hashtag, man, in there. Y'all make sure y'all put it in the comments, man. Like, subscribe, all that, man. We need all this, man. We need the love, man. We, we put in a lot of work. Quality content. That's what we're doing over here at First of the Party, man. It's coming, though. It's coming. Hey, but look, thanks for the love, y'all. Hey, wash y'all feet. <laughs>